Hello and welcome to another video. It's been said that the new Windows 11 OS has borrowed styling cues from KDE and even Mac OS. So how about the reverse, styling KDE to look more like Windows 11? Well, British-made Farron OS October 2021 has just been released with a very familiar interface, and we're going to take a quick look at it now. Farron OS 2021.10 is built on top of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, Focal Fossa, plus some special Farron OS sauce hosted on Git as the repository plus some PPAs. Let's spin up a fresh kernel VM with the latest install ISO I just downloaded. So here we go, we've got English US. Okay, the live session user is being welcomed. So the session is coming up. There we go. Let's close the connection notice. We'll skip uh, the welcome tour for now because we'd like to go straight to the installation. So there's the install Farron OS icon, which appears to be Calamares. Yes, that's the version 3.2.44.2. I've got American English, that's good. We'll go with the default here on our virtual disk. 300, 300 megabytes EFI. The rest is Farron OS and Swap. That looks good. Let's go ahead and install. Okay. So now it's uh, creating the partitions and then unpacking the uh, images in the ISO, and installing them on the uh, hard disk. Okay, we are about to wrap up this stage with the uh, bootloader installation. Doing some final steps. Okay, we're unmounting. Okay, all done. So it asks to restart now. We'll do that. We'll remove the installation medium and press enter. Okay, it's coming back up again. All right, we're here for the second round of the Calamari's installer. So American English is already selected, so I'll click Next here. And uh, let's fix that time zone. We're in the Los Angeles time zone here. Click Next, English default keyboard is good. So, Put in Steven here for my name. I'll call this host name Farron1. Give myself a password once and again for good measure. I would make this next instead of setup because we're already setting it up, but that's just a little niggle for me. All right, um, so we're configuring the locales again, I think. And, um, Let's see what else it's trying to do here. Again, for best experience, of course, uh, install on bare hardware. Uh, running on a virtual machine here, and um, for some distributions, I noticed it can be a little slow, even on a kernel virtual machine, like we're running here on top of Arch Linux. All right, I created my account. And uh, looks like we may be just about done here. Okay, so it's finishing up and wants to restart the computer. That sounds good. Okay, so there's the login window. Looks to be light DM, but I'm not sure. Okay, it's welcoming me, welcoming me, and uh, 
So standing by for the desktop. is doing some initial configurations. This is the first KDE launch for this session. First launch is always a little bit more. It takes a little more time. Okay, so we got get the welcome to Farron, S, Farron OS tour. Let's close this connection notice. And let's go ahead and start the tour. So we did some changes automatically, they say. All right, so they changed it to XRender as the default compositor, since this is indeed a VM. We're running on a kernel VM, so not VirtualBox or VMware. So we don't need to install any tools or anything. Uh, they also offer to, uh, uh, for you to use the transfer tool to transfer files to Farron OS from Windows, for example. Also, we can install the restricted codecs from Apple and Microsoft and so forth. We won't do that today, but um, it's good to have. We have two mode, desktop modes, the Farron OS desktop default and the tablet mode for touchscreens. That's nice. Of course, we've got the application menu down the bottom left. We'll look at that later. Uh, so we've got the window management as a taskbar down below. So we've got um, pre-populated the Vivaldi web browser Files, File Browser, and also the uh, Farron Store. We'll be looking at that as well later. Let's click Next. So it also got a system tray here. Um, yeah, okay. For desktop search, just type on the desktop with no open windows or use Alt F2. Okay, we'll be doing that as well. So the Farron OS store is available. I'm going to click on next here. And let's switch to the dark theme mode. I tend to like that for my eyes. Okay, that's, that's the global theme. Select next and for the accent color, I'll choose red today. Make it stand a little bit more from the dark background. Also, it offers uh, to pair your Android device with your Farron OS install using uh, KDE Connect. All right. Do this eye strain at night. Uh, they have night color. Uh, let's go ahead and click on that and activate it. From sunset to sunrise, makes sense to me. Click on apply and close this window. Uh, next, oh, okay, we're done with the tour. So I'll click on enjoy, I think I will. So let's click on update manager. So you can do security, software, system snapshots using this tool. Let's click okay. So I'm on a fast internet connection, so I don't bother with switching to a local mirror. Let's go ahead and install the updates first. So I'll type in my password to elevate privileges. And let it go ahead and download. It's doing that pretty quick. And now it's already at the installation stage. Click on details, just like with Ubuntu. So most of the packages are from Ubuntu uh, with uh, GitLab, I believe, for Farron OS for their special sauce and um, some other sources we'll look at momentarily. So it's just released, but it already has a few updates. So that is good. Updates are good. Okay, so we are now up to date. Let's see what we got here. So let's do edit, preferences. Okay, so yeah, you can schedule 
when you want to refresh for updates. Okay, pretty standard stuff. Let's look at system snapshots. Oh, okay, that launches time shift. So the integrated time shift into this tool. So let's do a quick default configuration here with rsync. This is an ext4 system. So it needs rsync, yeah, the snapshot levels and everything else here. Defaults are good. Okay, so time shift is now active. So that's done. Let's take a closer look at the software sources. So I'll enter my password here for privilege escalation. And uh, you are using the Ubuntu, British Ubuntu base uh, repository. So they're on GitLab, yes. So you can take a look at all the special things they've done there. Very, very nice. We don't have time for that today. Anyway, you've got some personal package archives for graphics drivers. Um, additional repositories are the Google Chrome browser, I guess, Vivaldi browser, which is down below. We also got the Wine HQ emulator for gaming and other things. Um, yeah, very handy to have. It's the additional repositories. Good. We also can show history updates here. Oh, Linux kernels. Okay. So be careful when you mess with this. Um, so you can lose your Wi-Fi connection and other bad things if, if it goes wrong. So we're currently running 5.11-37, which is active. I got a bunch of superseded 5.11s. 5.8 is completely end of life. Don't know why that's here still. Uh, we also have 5.4, which is supported until April 2025. So you've got the option to run 5.4, an older kernel that's uh, fairly stable. Okay. Let's go ahead and close the update manager. Okay. Um, let me uh, change the screen resolution. Let me launch the uh, display configuration in the system settings and select 1920 by 1080. 60 hertz is fine. Okay, there we go. So now it looks a little better, less blurry. So let's configure the desktop and wallpaper. I just right clicked on the desktop. So pretty much standard KDE fare so far. So, um, look for a darker desktop. I'm liking today Gallium Wavy Effect. So I'll hit Apply. All right, that's very pleasant. Doesn't, doesn't uh, weld my retinas. Okay, so right click, you can open the files, create new. So you can do text, HTML or Office, LibreOffice documents, that seems to be installed. Pretty standard stuff, icon configuration. Add panels, widgets. We can lock the, lock the session or leave the session. Okay, let's go to the application launcher or start menu, depending on what you uh, prefer. Let's go to the system settings. So for the global theme, let's see. Okay, we've got Farron OS Dark. They've got the KDE themes as well, the Breeze, etc. Got some other ones here. Human, Human Dark, Mac and Cheese, Mac and Cheese Dark. I guess some of those are from Ubuntu, the human ones at least. Desktop layout is Farron OS. So that's what we're looking at here. You can also use tablet mode as before, if you've got a touch screen. Makes it touch screen friendlier. Let's see what else they have here. Advanced settings. Okay, yeah, nothing special there. Let's see how their firewall set up. Okay, looks very familiar, I think. Yes, it is. The canonical Ubuntu uncomplicated firewall version 0.36. It's good to set up. 
I strongly recommend you do that or use some other firewall. So as uh, KDE, you've got 5.22.5, 5.86 for the frameworks. Qt is 5.15 and the kernel is, as before, 5.11. Okay. This is a virtual machine, so we're not using Wayland here. We got a single icon here on the desktop, uh, send feedback. So that should launch Vivaldi, and yes, it does. Uh, they're on weebly.com. So here you can uh, report a bug in Farin OS. You can report a dependency issue or just contact me, I guess, singular, not plural, or submit a review. Okay, well, I, I'm submitting a re little review on YouTube today. The homepage is on Weebly. Say hello to a new way to use your computer. So yeah, this is addressed to primarily Windows and maybe even Mac users. So you install it once and enjoy it for the rest of your device's lifetime. I guess they're implying at least that uh, this is a semi-rolling release, non-LTS, but they're using Ubuntu LTS, so don't know about that. So the usual fluff here, a bunch of Applications are available. Yeah, same as with Ubuntu that it's built on. Farin OS is a great looking distro that's ideal for people switching from Windows to Linux. And also Farin OS is polished and well-stocked Linux distro. Comes close to being an ideal replacement for Microsoft Windows and Mac OS. Oh, even a attractive replacement for any other distro. Well, that's a strong statement from, from them. From the media. Okay, let's shut down Vivaldi. We also got the files program here. Let's launch it. That looks familiar. Let me take a look here and see what that actually is. Help about. And it's Nemo 5.0.3, which is the latest Nemo that's typically included with Cinnamon desktop environment. Interesting choice. I like Nemo. It's, uh, Nemo is one of my favorite uh, file managers, so I'm glad they chose that. It's my personal preference. So let's look at the Farron store. It also looks pretty familiar. We've seen this before. Um, yeah. You'll see this with a Ubuntu and Cinnamon install. A Mint, I mean, rather. Yeah, there we go. So Farron OS maintains this for their distribution. Okay. Well, cool. All right. So nothing too unusual here. Let's um, do on the bottom right here, maybe blocking part of this, but let's uh, open up system maintenance. Wants to do a couple of things. It's checking your system for issues. Yeah, it wants to install the language packs, so we'll ignore this report because I'm not doing that today. Don't want to waste your time. Um, so set up the system retort utility. We can ignore this as well because we already configured time shift, so that's done. And no other problems were detected. Okay. Do about so the they call this the Farron maintenance tool as well. Again, check out their GitLab for details on what changes they made to these projects. The power of open source. Yeah, close this now. And let me look at the applications they've installed. So I've got the usual utilities here. Donation donation button, always useful. Do donate if you like this stuff. It's only encourage you to donate. Oh, Info Center. I think that may be KDE's Info Center. Let me take a look. Ah, yes, it is. Okay. We've seen that already. So moving on. All right. We've got Driver Manager. This is also available in Ubuntu. 
got console, maybe connect, LibreOffice. Let's see what version they ins have installed. It's probably what's available in the Focal Fossa repository. And, uh, yeah, it's relatively recent, from this year at least, 2021. 7.1.3.2, LibreOffice, Community Edition. Okay, not too old, fairly fresh. Let's see what else we got here. In addition to the usual KDE stuff, we got Remina for remote desktop and remote connections to other computers. Um, yeah, not too much else here. VLC for the media player. Okay, let me launch the console terminal emulator and try and struggle here and make this a little bit bigger and make the font size a lot bigger for you guys so you can see what I'm typing here. So let's uh, see what FS file system tab FS tab has. So we've got the boot EFI partition, the root partition, the swap partition, nothing unusual. You name shows 5.11.0-37- generic. So I guess they're using a generic Ubuntu kernel. NeoFetch isn't installed, so let me fix that by doing a sudo apt update, entering my password. There you can see all the uh, sources again. It's a good reference. And let's install NeoFetch. sudo apt install NeoFetch. Yeah, looks good. So let's install the dependencies and let it finish. Okay, let's clear the terminal and type NeoFetch. And there we go. There you have your summary of the themes and all the details and how this was configured. Let's check the LSB dash release. Yeah, we're on Ubuntu 20.04. Distribution description is Farron OS. Okay. So this is a very whirlwind tour of Farron OS. Farron's target audience appears to be Windows users looking to switch with an interface similar to Windows 11. Based on what we've just looked at, they should feel right at home, visually at least, with plenty of hand-holding along the way. I do like the overall look and feel and spit and polish, with lots of attention to detail. It's one of the distros I will consider for installing on a non-techie friend or relative's computer should they express an interest in moving on from Windows. I'm primarily an Arch user, and I don't foresee any issues taking their theming and general layout for my own use since their entire project is open source. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if this video was useful to you, please comment and consider liking and subscribing to support this channel. Until next time, take care.